And welcome back. This is Kotel from the War of Rights video, and I have a guest from Fort Georgia today. Oh, hey, hey, guys. It's me, Fuji. The legendary Mr. Fuji from Fort Georgia, and you guys probably recognize him um, from some of my videos. He tends to be featured quite a bit here. Now, I've seen you go after, I think, spines, scalps, eyes. Yep. Am I missing anything? Uh, teeth. Teeth. I, forgot teeth. I forgot teeth. You're right. I did hear a teeth the other day. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. The magic book has taught me many things. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, glad to have another guest commentator, especially Fuji here. Um, quick overview. This is UEC. Uh, the first map on Friday. It'll be a Burnside Bridge. They will be using the new rules, which is uh, 30 minutes. Um, no sprinting and no bayonets. Uh, good, good luck to them. Um, it'll be 137 on the defending CSA team versus 138 on the attacking Union. Let's take a look at that Union team first. They have the ANV, 20th Georgia, 6th Texas, 2 Core, and 4th Georgia. Let's see, and we have Killer leading uh, ANV, Rousseau leading 6th Texas, 20th Georgia led by Jumbo, who I think I missed, 8th Florida led by Monio, who I also missed. I haven't fucked this all up. Uh, 2 Core led by Edgar, and 4th Georgia led by Colonel Owens. So what can you tell me about, uh, you know, Fort George here and Colonel Owens and how he likes to uh, lead in these types of events? Well, obviously, I'm pretty terrible with the leading stuff at times. I still have no idea where I'm going half of the time. Um, whereas I think Owen, to be honest, most of the officer corps actually know what they're doing in the fourth. Um, to be fair, most officers in the regiments do. Um, Owens likes to be quite aggressive, um, especially like on maps where you wouldn't really expect it. Um, he likes to push pretty hard and it sometimes works uh, and it catches the enemy off guard. Other times you do die, it, it does happen. Uh, but you know, I've been it's, always, it's, always, it's always a fun time, you know. Yeah. I, I, I go into these things just to have a good time, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, and if you're the attacker, you know, you're supposed to attack, so. Well, exactly, I mean, obviously, uh, with my regiment's doing the uh, cross the bridge fun time without bayonets, and I think it is. Isn't it? Yeah, no bayonets, no spirit to kill thirty. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Yep. So I can see why you said, "Yeah, I'll commentate today." It's all, it's all making sense now. Yeah, yeah. I'll just. I'll sit. Too far. We. I have no idea what the maps are until like what about when they do that briefing. Oh yeah, yeah. We find out like two minutes before we start recording. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like confused, like a bit dazed and confused with the maps. Um, at least this one, like, do know where I'm going. It's pretty simple. Cross the bridge, somehow beat the enemy. Yep, and then uh, um, looks like we got some already ticking off here. So for the Union, yeah. we've got GC with two guns. We've got two core with a gun and a tomato girl. Um, and the Captain Pingle's leading the GC guns. And we have Fort Georgia under Carl uh, Girat. Is that how yeah. I say his name? I think so. Maybe it's, maybe it's Karl Gerard. It's German. Um, I think it's something to do with a gun. Or they're named after a fella. I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, but I am looking forward to see how artillery is going to affect this fun time. Because, uh, as we all found out right before the start, there are eight guns in play on this map, which is effectively point-blank range for these things. Yeah, I, so I don't think I've ever seen die. the Union have, uh, not the Union, the uh, UEC have this many guns. I I haven't either. You, I'm, I've usually seen a couple. Um, and I remember we were, when I was defending as the CSA one time, uh, I was seeing a lot of uh, squad wipe or regiment wipes uh, with the artillery. Certainly, uh, if the artillery uh, is at least mildly accurate on such close range, it's going to be pretty devastating. You know, you're probably going to expect to see lots of uh, squad wipes, which, um, judging from this giant pool of blood, it may have already been one. Oh, yeah, and I see poor A and V trying to get across right now. Yeah, I've, I've just seen that. Yeah, not going well for those. Oh, there's the fourth. I think though, the rest of whoever went first was at the AMV. Um, it looks like they managed to 
effectively suck up all that all volley from that first round. And a large number of people uh, got across, from what I can see. Yeah, it seems like they're getting some across. Third Alabama is still, looks like six Texas is now trying to get across. Yeah, I can see some from the sixth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got sixth Louisiana here. Uh, eighth Florida's right up the rear there. Yeah, but we've across, we have got elements from the sixth Texas, A and V. I think I saw 20th George. I think I saw Owens there, but I think he just died. No, no, he's there. He's there. He's there. So we got four. It's just a peely peely mash of like every regiment, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I'm seeing two flags on the bridge right now. We'll see if they can yep. recover them. That's, uh... Oh, yeah, no. I just saw one get picked up and then I dropped. Although that Union Army is pounding the uh, CSA here. Yeah, definitely, definitely good to pound, use that artillery. Uh, that's going to be like your main way to cross for the Union. Uh, if they can either knock them over, like at least knock a lot of regiments over, or even kill them, if that's if they are able to do that, uh, that could definitely help the uh, Union. It's yeah. one of those things. It's got to be the time just right, like right before. The uh, Union get into that range where they Oh yeah, I agree with you definitely. It's, uh, it's, it looks it's, like there's some sort of a foothold on the far right side. Indeed, and it looks like four charges out in front. Uh, oh yeah, it does look like it. So, again, this can go either go really well or really badly. But from the looks of things, seeing with the amount of people here, um, it, it looks like it's going to be a pretty hard thing to wipe out now. Like, it's not just one regiment here, I'm looking at least three elements here, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a strong thing to contest. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's always tough to wipe this out anyways, the CSA, because of, uh, you can't really charge yeah. him out without going out of bounds. Yeah, that's, the, that's a big problem. Uh, it looks like there's been some volleys onto that Confederate regiment on 56th Virginia. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, in they're fact... They're taking some serious hits, actually. Yeah, looks like uh, Fort Georgia and who was with them? AMV looks like AMV, uh, 30, 39th New York. To be honest, it looks like it's just a, a mash of everyone at this point. Uh, and it looks like yeah, I agree they are you, yeah. pulling back and moving back to the fence line. That, that gives a, a uh, nice little opening here, although it looks like we have somebody else moving up now. Here comes the third Alabama yeah. under Mr. Williamson. Yes, yeah, obviously these, reg uh, these events are sometimes quite difficult to coordinate purely because obviously you the only way to really coordinate is sending a runner um and you know you can shoot a single guy yeah, it's pretty especially in the map this close pretty easy to kill one guy and the nature of the close range is it just makes everything so crazy uh, you've got to really hammer home that discipline and make sure your guys are moving around when you need them Make sure you're pushing the advantage whenever you see it. Um, it looks like on the far right they really haven't moved. Um, the Union, that is. They really haven't moved that much. They've they wiped out that regiment, and they haven't done much to push that advantage. No, I, I wonder if they're concerned about crossing the open ground. I bayonets. Yeah, from what I can see, they also will end up in the crossfire because you've got that huge element there, which is Third Alabama, as well as the second. 56th Virginia, and I mean, then you're up to that to their right. You've got the oh. elements of the LFL, uh, although yeah. So and that's a huge regiment there, and charging in is extremely risky at this stage purely because you've got no bayonets. So it, you're not doing good, and if you die, it's as the Union trying to attack this area. It's it's going to be a bad blow. In fact, it looks like 20th and 20th Georgia and 8th Florida have moved up a little bit here with Jumbo. Yeah, they've moved up here. Uh, Fourth George's on that right hand side, although they're pretty depleted, looks like they're pulling back. Yeah. Bring them, hold that middle line. Sixth Louisiana, two core over there, and hold that rear guard position. But from what you can see, it looks like they're in some sort of crossfire, and they're being shot from, from about three different angles, so that is not a good position to be in. No, and um, I mean, looking at the tickets, it's, it's not too bad right now. Um, no, it seems pretty even, but obviously, it's if if you've got no flag up for the Union, which I'm seeing flags go down every so often, um, it's 
it's just that little bit longer to get a, a regiment back in uh, proper full order. No, oh, you're you're absolutely right. I, I in uh, fact might argue like, keep hey, the uh, flags back a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean that's usually the hope that we, we uh, usually do on this map. Um, you like hide behind a tree or at least hide somewhere to slide onto the rear. Uh, but obviously, it's, it's just this map just sort of breaks down all communication. Because everyone's really got to concentrate on that foot, that one front really. Because you, I mean, you've got two options. You either attack on numerous fronts and probably get wiped out because Confederacy have the high ground defensive position, or you all go in on one side, which is what obviously the plan here was. Um, but that allows you to sort of be caught in that sort of a disadvantage with numerous people up above the high ground. And it looks like the Union is falling back. They've fallen back down to the road. Yeah, it looks like they're reconsolidating, but again, I, this might, in my opinion, be a bad move right no, now. No, it's not a bad move. Um, yeah, I mean, they, you've, you've still got that huge foothold, which is going to take a serious effort to dislodge. Oh, yeah, and we're at 3130 with the UEC on this map, with the, you know, with, with the restriction on there. If you if you can get down three-quarters to four-fifths of a morale state without charging, that's not bad. No, that... I said, even though it seems like they haven't really made much headway, they still have that foothold on the across the bridge, which is a much easier thing to hold rather than cross the bridge, which is just a kill zone. I just realized I didn't do roll call for the uh, CSA yet, so as we have a few seconds here, we'll try to knock them out here. All right, so we have Third Alabama under Williamson. We got Major Venom leading SB. LFL led by Major Hooker. O'Keefe leading 52nd. 56 led by Slaughter. AGL led by GCB. And then on the guns, we got Sir Flex from LFL, Sergeant Leo from SB, Tanner Fork from Jeff Davis Battery, and Cap Corporal Barron from Jeff Davis Battery. So, sorry I didn't catch you guys earlier, but. It's tough to watch. Uh, I mean, it also doesn't help this map's so close, you don't really have that much time. Um, so, looks like the Union have sort of diverse or spread out. They're now sort of spreading out on that right-hand side of the bridge there. Yeah, it looks like uh, we got Carol on that far left and 20 George is kind of supporting them. Kind of spreading out in a bit more of a linear formation here now. And I think this is going to work a little bit better for them. Right, so yeah. They're now, rather than all concentrated in one group, allowing the Confederacy to bring all their guns to bear on a single location. You now have to, you're causing them to all spread out, which certainly is going to be a good idea. Um, hopefully, Union artillery can... Well, if the Union want to achieve this, they're going to have to really push on that Union artillery. Uh, because the Confederate artillery is, as you can see, with the Jefferson Davis battery there, with Baron, they have now pushed that right up. So, that's going to be some serious damage if they fire some canister. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like the CSA's gotten there already in pretty decent positioning now. Yeah, they've managed to get their artillery really close there. Excellent for canister and everything. Um, it seems to be a bit of a slog at the moment. Um, in fact, it looks like the AMV are moving. Well, we are now at uh, below 30, so... Sprinting and bayonets are live, and maybe he's looking to try to get a uh, flank going and get around. Yeah, I mean, because if you have a look, the uh, the Confederate right-hand side, or the Union's left, is completely open. Uh, I'm seeing, like, a couple blokes just sort of stood around, like one guy, and a couple scouts, it looks like, but there's really nothing on the Confederate right-hand side. Oh, Killer is uh, in the backfield now. There is nothing to yeah. stop him, and nobody's moving yeah. to stop him. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can see is a small element of... Let's have a look at who that is. It's some regiment with an officer on the Confederate side, but uh, it looks like it's only numbering about five men or so. Oh, like, no, it's an artillery that's, battery. Yep, LFL's that's, artillery battery. Yep, and they're not they are not really oriented towards him. They're kind of oriented towards the point. No, they're, they're the completely facing the wrong way. I don't think they have any idea that what's coming for them. Uh, and it, from what I can see, I don't think any Confederate 
regiments are moving out to contest this uh, advance. I don't, I don't think anybody saw it. I think they all uh, still think everybody's in front of them. They did see two Confederate scouts staring at them, so they must have spotted it. In fact, no, here we go. Looks uh, like, looks like O'Keefe yeah, yep, yep, like got the word, and he's bringing the 52nd over now. Yep. Um, I think Killer did a bit of a, had a bit of a delay there. I think he was reforming his regiment. Yeah. Oh, this might have been um, too late, because here comes Venom as well. Oh, yeah. Was Killer might have yeah. taken a little bit too long getting moved Yeah, out. I think Killer really should have pushed up. Um, obviously, it's that fog of war, though. I don't think he knew there was nothing there for them. Uh, but now he's going to have to face two different regiments, which is going to be a bit, right, a bit a dangerous thing. In fact, I think there's three. Yeah, AGL is bringing up the rear on the right hand side. It's a lot coming his way, yep. Yeah. But that has now left the Confederates with what I can see is just two, one or two elements all bunched up together. In fact, I think the 3rd Alabama, one of the Confederate regiments, might be going in for a charge. Yeah, they might, you know, or they might just be kind of. No, they're just going to be doing face, some vlogging. Yeah. Which is probably the wise decision, to be fair. Um, looks like 20th George has had to pull back after some serious losses. Yeah. Oh, looks like we got the charge developing here on Killer. Yep. And I, SB I going think, in. Yeah, I think that's I think that's Killer's regiment wiped out. Yeah. They, A little they just bit too have, long, but like you said, fog of war. You didn't don't really know. So. Yeah, I mean, they can hear the cannon firing, and well, in my opinion, I would have left at least one regiment on that right-hand side. Um, but luckily, uh, Killer was spotted, so the Confederacy could move out and counter that. Yep, now we are, let's see, we're at 26 minutes. Both teams are now at engage. A little bit of a uh, balance in favor of the CSA, but not too much. Too much yet. But they are the attackers, so. Yeah. I'm sorry, no, CSA is the defenders. Yeah, CSA is the defenders, so they've got that. I mean, they've got less tickets, but yeah. they can... They can get into those defense positions much faster. They've got the Confederate artillery set up in excellent positions. I mean, I think I saw some canister shot completely wipe out half of the line earlier. Uh, because we got... Yeah, I mean, two, if you have a look in the center, just behind the bridge, you'll see two Confederate artillery pieces just set up there, ready to hit whatever comes across that bridge, really. They definitely have it zeroed in now. Yeah, and it looks mean, like Lieutenant I'm... Fork and yep. So Jeff Davis battery. Those they are two guns. Looks yeah. Like they're the ones they moved up. I think yeah, they've got a large number of people there. Um, if you have a look on the far left on the Union side across the bridge, uh, it looks like there's a element over here. Uh, it seems to be a mix, mostly Fourth George, but I'm seeing uh, Third Arkansas. I think that is. Uh, looks like Targray, yeah. some of his guys, I don't think I've had him in the room. Yeah. We'll I think out. they've just sort of, yeah, six tech is there as well. Yeah, so, a few of those guys, yeah, looks like Owen's back in now, and I see, uh, Ma yeah. Major Clark, he's got the flag. Oh, uh, yep, he's got the flag now. But yeah, so it looks, so this is actually pretty sizable force now, so, um, if the Confederates don't spot it, because once again, they've complete, looks like they're abandoning their right-hand side, leaving it open for Clarky. And Owens. Um, There's one officer down here. Let's see. Surflex. Oh, he's, yeah, he's he's already. He's not even looking down that way. Yeah, he, I think he was just looking over at uh, his artillery that hits. So it looks. I mean, as this is Owens, and it looks like he's going to go in for some serious aggressive play because I know we did it last time when we were the attacking. We pushed hard on this uh, flank, and that was under opposition. There's, there's no opposition. No, oh, looks like he's heading out now. Let's see. I'm going to follow him for a little bit and see if we can see where he's going to set up. Yeah, I'll have a look at this bridge because it looks like we've got a huge, huge number of uh, Union troops crossing the bridge now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to swing over to that first and I'll swing back over. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, I don't think... Yeah, so the Union is going to sure probably pick up that flag of uh, Killer's flag, so they've recovered that flag. They're waiting for us on the left, yeah. It's like all that union. Oh, they're going uh, left. They're going left. They're going left right as the uh, Confederacy charged on the uh, right there. Confederates left. So, but it looks like that attack has been repulsed. Because uh, there are quite a few number of uh, Union troops down there. And oh, yeah. I can see SB trying to, trying to finish that off again, though. You, you can't stay yeah. there too long because then you end up... Getting... Yeah, I think that's out of bounds, isn't it? Yep. And I'm starting to see a yeah. lot of them kind of just, you know, fall. Die, yeah. But what I think what that's done is it has certainly uh, pulled a lot of 
attention away. Um, that well, that huge Union crossing has pulled a lot of Union unit, uh, Confederate units to the front of that hill. Whereas, as, if you have a look, we've got a lot of uh, Union units on that left consolidating together. Yeah, uh, it looks like Williams is going yeah, for a charge. Say, I'm watching Williamson. He's got some of these small elements out here. Although Killer's right there as well. Let's see if he can help him. I think picking up Killer's flag and allowing them to regroup there has certainly uh, helped the Union force out here. It's just whether they can outgun these Confederates here. There's so many. Well, there's there's the melee that, saving, Alabama has already wiped him out, uh, that small element. But it looks like LFL's coming in for a charge on the flank. The Rousseau's out here. He might be able to move to help, but he's going to move quick. Uh, if you have the left of them, you'll even see elements of 6th Texas over here. Uh, it looks like they're shooting into the flank of the LFL now. Um, very... Yeah, yeah that, this is the chaos now, because you've got... An element on the left that didn't have an officer, and well, everyone's just sort of mosh pitting it in now. It seems. Keeping an eye on Fort Georgia, they're still in the background now. It looks like they're going maybe to the Alamo. Uh, yes, it looks like it. They're, they're moving past. Looks like they're going to go for some Confederate artillery. I don't know, it looks like they went for a Confederate flag. No, uh, no. Oh no, that was 6 Texas went for a Confederate flag. No. Um, that'll be easy for the Confederacy to recover, but it will be a delay. But it looks like the Union on the left flank has been wiped out by the Confederacy. Yep, they're done. I'm, I'm seeing Owens. He doesn't have a flag with him, which is the biggest problem, but he has reached the orchard. Yep. Without a flag, though, that uh, is of less yeah. value. Yeah, without a flag, that's you might as well uh, just keep yourself hidden um, and hope that the enemy moves away so you can recover your flag. You see on the ticket balance that that move on the left actually costs the Union, looks like, quite a bit. Yeah, it looks like that was a very costly move because I did see huge numbers of Union troops on that left flank. They're all gone. It's just Confederate flags other than a couple Union flags there. Um, and it, but it looks like the, aside from the elements down by the coastline, the Union's been pushed off their little foothold. So 20th get across the bridge with some of their men. Yeah, some of their men, but I mean, I think they got their flag across, so that, oh, never mind. I just watched Nemesis get hit directly with a shell, which I think was from a Union artillery shell. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that can happen. Oh, Never yeah, mind. Comes a sorry. <laughs> <From the teacher. laughs> there we go. He's gone. Oh well. It, it happens. You fire a short oh, round. Yeah, and sorry. SP you're... get nailed by one. Got, an, got hit oh, by an artillery. Yeah, shot. no, that was a good hit. Looks like Venom's regiment's oh, shit, serious. Uh, can't tell if there are any losses, but they definitely knocked him over. Yeah, and that was by. This one is ready. Uh, looks like that was done by Fort Charger. From if I could tell by okay. the smoke, that was uh, yeah, Mr. We, Carl's gun that hit the SP. Yeah, we recently opened, like, uh, well, reopened, I suppose, the artillery, um, which, is, which is quite nice. We have people doing artillery; it's always fun to have them. Um, here we go. Looks like NV's going across the bridge now with Killer. Yeah, looks like two corps trying to move forward too into the center. Um, yeah, looks like they might be moving to support, which is probably a relatively wise move, although their left flank is now being shot at by Confederate units. But looks like Killer's going to use this uh, to cross the bridge. Although the artillery we'll try, that, that artillery yeah. kind of knocked him on his ass, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But significant numbers got across without any real volley opposition to them, which is probably a uh, good bet for the Union. Because uh, that's now broadens their front here because they've got units on the right and left of the bridge now which will in theory cause the confederacy to now spread their troops once again in fact i just saw another artillery hit yeah hit an uh, lfl there yeah yeah and uh, that hit that looked pretty well on target there oh agl just got hit too Oh, yeah. if Killer charges in yeah. now, he'd have a very Cutter. good opportunity. Yeah. Deeper Cutter. Fall back. Fall back. Really oh, he's calling for falling back. Fall back. Just to decide to say, yeah, from AGL. Yeah, Killer's got an open door now. Looks 
of that already shot. That was an excellent artillery shot. Um, uh, who was it? It doesn't look like anyone's taking advantage of the now empty Confederate flank there. Um, well, I mean, it looks like oh. Jumbo's moving up. Yeah, Jumbo looks like he's moving up. Uh, it looks like if you look right in the center, LFL is moving in to shoot at the second two core, I believe. Uh, yeah, didn't go the greatest for them, but they, I think they only lost a couple men, so it wasn't too bad. No, but now that I'm looking at tickets, it's starting to even up a little bit here. Yeah, definitely evening up. Uh, what is this time? Again, it's, it is definitely hard for the unit in this map. It's just such comes, a slog. Comes Owen again across the bridge. We'll see if we can make it. I think two cord have doing that little positioning there. Um, yeah, is is helping a bit. Uh, it's not making it perfect, but uh, go boys, go, it's, go, go, go. Well, it's definitely helping. Yeah, Rather boys, than the Confederacy have been able to have a regiment slap bang right in front of the bridge, um, which I know I've seen a lot, especially on the maps where the Union has the Confederate and I was the Confederacy. I was seeing Union regiments get cut down in their droves when we had some proper regiments in that centre rank. Well, it looks but, like A and B versus Third Alabama right now in the center. Yeah, looks like a massive mosh pit here. Yeah, and, those, those can favor the attacker as long as you have enough men into it. Yeah, and I mean the Union definitely has the man advantage here. I mean, you've got uh, 20th George there moving in to assist A and V against the LFL. Um, <laughs> I think we had a couple oh, yeah. team kills coming in there with that already, but you know. <laughs> yeah, probably. A little bit of danger close, but that's alright, you know. Yeah, danger close, but I mean, it looks like the Confederate unit in that center has been pretty much wiped out, and you also have un two Union units on that left flank. Oh, that, that opens up some good possibilities now for this Union team, I think. Yeah, I mean, it was at the cost of the Union right side, but... Considering that most that you've got two Confederate units on that right side, it, that's probably Although, a good idea. Here comes a counterattack by the CSA. It looks like AGL 56 moving yeah, in. Yeah, looks like a, that looks like a pretty numerous attack here. This might collapse this Union flank. We'll see. Yeah, 56 have just been charged into the side there. If the Union could hold this, I think they'll be in very good shape. Yep, yeah, looks like Killer's moving in to assist. Looks like, looks like uh, George's Dora, fourth George's Dora, is calling for a charge. Yeah, they looks like they're fighting AGL right now. Yeah. Uh, looks like you've got Confederate yeah. units sort of dropping in there. Um, they're not really going to be much of a position for such a. No, unit it, it there, looks but like the second New York looks to be a. Yeah, that's a big threat right now. They can hold this, they'll be in good shape, but it looks like they're kind of losing command and control a little bit, to be honest. Yeah, the cannon hasn't been is no longer crewed, because it looks like the cannoneer crew was wiped out. Oh, uh, Alright, well, here comes Owens, though. Looks like he's going to try to take command. Yep, looks like he's going in. He's got a pretty sizable force moving up. Looks like it's more elements. You can see, though, uh, tickets, though. Look at this. Again, they... Still a little bit behind, but evened out. And 14, 30 taken losses. Not great, but certainly winnable. Yeah, not great, but if they play it right, it's it's winnable. Um, they just got to keep that momentum up. I mean, they've done, done some pretty good progress here on the left flank. But again, it was, there was a charge yeah. in the center I missed. SP was able to wipe out one unit. I didn't quite see who it was. Uh, it's, pro it's probably the remnants of uh, two core. That looks like uh, it. Yeah, you're probably right. Because uh, there's no one crew in that center uh, flank or center position by the bridge, which for now is okay. But uh, it, when it comes to reorganizing a regiment across the bridge, which you can see from the Union spawn is coming, that's going to be uh, an oppo properly opposed crossing. Oh, well, let's see. Looks like we might have another attack by Venom here against 8th Florida. Yeah, looks like 8th Florida's uh, decided to bug out of there, which is probably a wise move. Yeah, I, I would too if I was them. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't retreat the way they're going, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, probably not. Um, problem I, I, is, I might have made a right turn instead of a left turn there, but you know. Yeah. Uh, problem is that's now opened the huge union unit down here, which is the ANV, open to that attack for uh, rifle fire from SB there. Although it looks like we've got Russo leading a force over to counter that, which is probably wise. 
Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on how much of a drop he gets on the SB, because SB could turn I, and hit you pretty hard. No, SB, SB got the first volley off and wiped out that regiment. Yeah. Like you, take a shot, you take a shot at the king, you, gotta, you, you can't miss. Yeah, you can take a shot, but you've got to really do it quickly, and unfortunately the SB, they were already in position, they didn't have to move and organize, they just had to aim and fire, which is... Gave them that advantage. Yeah. It's like one of your guys, Private Sideways, is trying to recover this flag here. Yeah, we do hope. Uh, we do uh, order our dudes to pick up any flag, um, even if it's not our regiment's flag, just because it will help the game out. Especially on this map, it, it's so yeah. flag dependent for the attacker. It's extremely flag dependent for the attackers. Um, but yeah, we do try and uh, get anyone to pick up any flag if it's there and it's allied. But, as you know, sometimes people are a little bit adverse to picking up a flag because it means they can't shoot anymore. Yeah, and then it's the other units, and it's like, oh, you got my flag, you oh, have to come with me. Like oh, wait, yep, for yep. a charge. I think this might be pretty key right here, whether or not this holds. This is going to be a key charge. I'm going to just move away a little bit because I am on maximum volume, which is why everyone says I'm too loud when I speak. Nah, I can hear you. I, I'm like, oh, where's Fort Georgia? Oh, there's Fuji. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I play on maximum volume. They actually, Fort Georgia held that charge, but unfortunately, AGL is yeah. going to come and finish them off. Yeah, they held the charge, but unfortunately, there's just too many Confederates there, and that's going to be the end of the Union left flank across the bridge. Uh, they, they gave a good accounting of themselves, though. In fact, that's pretty much all the Union across the bridge. Everyone else has been bottled up by this bridge end, uh, although Jumbo has managed to get uh, his regiment across the bridge with pretty sizable numbers. Yep, yeah, so he, he's, he's across back. now, and then I think you have, who was his back at the center? Two core, I would imagine? Yeah, two core's uh, taking its yeah. old position. It's so all blocking course, position, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a wise position. It's got some good cover, and you can definitely contest uh, Confederate units from just easily setting up for some proper shots against the Union when they cross that bridge. So it's a wise position, um, but as we saw before, they did get wiped out. Union already still doing work as well, as is CSA. It's pretty good. Uh, what are, you th yeah. what are your thoughts on the match so far? It's actually been quite entertaining. It's not like a one-sided thing. I'm seeing it going back and forth, which is always entertaining. Because um, I've seen maps where, or matches on this map, where it's it's so one-sided on the U uh, Confederate side that it's, it's just sad. Um, but looking at this, this is some seriously back and forth stuff it's still anyone's game at this point yeah i would agree i mean the union's behind a little bit on tickets here um and i think really it's going to be this next maneuver whatever they do this next big maneuver is going to kind of determine it in my view yes if they can make it good they don't have to win it but they got to make some progress either casualty wise or yeah. see some kind of position here oh looks like edgar's bringing the two core up to Make a big volley, maybe, uh, against the Confederate unit, the second oh, New York in the AGL. Oh, he's charging. Oh, looks like he's going for a charge. He's going for a charge. Uh, I don't know about this decision, to be honest with you. I would, personally, I wouldn't have charged in. He didn't really have the. He was kind of equal in numbers, but rather than a volley and then at least cut down their numbers a lot. No, uh, he's, he's, he's now he's, he's now charged wiped. in and been wiped out by it looks like three Confederate units there. Uh, now, now no one's guarding poor Rousseau as he crosses. This is the. No, it does, it look, yeah, it looks like the two cores not even at that center. But luckily for Russo. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was, wait, I was, I was waiting across. for it. I was, like, most of, I was about to say most of them got across, but. I mean, I mean, still a good number got across, but, you know. Good number got across. Do they have a flag? I'm not seeing a flag. Uh, they his flag's do... already across. Oh, no, his flag's already across. Yep. So he's linked up with his flag. So that's, that's good for the Texas there. It's, uh... Right, here comes Killer yeah. making his attempt. Yeah. Killer's right making his forward. attempt. Uh, and 8th Florida. Uh, the bat... Uh, we've got some skirmishes on the Union side there. Looks like 8th Florida, yeah. I'm not sure how effective they will be 
at such a range um, with so relatively few numbers. Um, but I suppose if it's keeping the Union, uh, sorry, Confederate heads down, just standing in the open, ready, uh, probably a good bet. But I'm not personally. sure it's having that effect, to be honest with you. But yeah, I mean, it might have worked if they had a few more doing it, but from the numbers, it's. No, and, and I personally meant... would have tried to push up. No, and you've got the Artie. The Artie is already doing that. Yeah, the artillery is the main thing for this. Skirmishers on this map, personally, are a little bit useless. I mean, I can see if you didn't have any yard and you were trying to do something, but you got four yeah. cannons that are having good effects. I say, they've got some, they've got significant amount of guns there shooting yes, yes, at the yes, yes, Confederate yes. lines, so personally, a, a unit of about, what, about ten men is that? Uh, yeah, about, about eight-ish, yeah, eight to ten, somewhere eight, in there. Eight, ten, skirmishing from across the river, uphill as well, through brush, it's it's, I don't know if that's a oh, wise you, decision. Oh, your boys are going for a swim. Oh. Under the bridge. Yeah, it looks like they're going for a bit of a swim. Uh, I remember watching one of your vids last time, and uh, I think a couple people drowned. And, and, one of, and one of them is Melville. Uh-oh, Melville. Oh, no, he, he, made it, he made it just back. above, yeah. Oh, no. no <laughs> he's no, gone. No. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, yeah, I've noticed that. Some of the character models, the ones that are shorter, they don't always make it across. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is that is very sad. I, I still like it. I think it's a good move. I, but I yeah, know it's, it's definitely funny. It's is you're rolling the dice there. Am I tall enough? Oh, it looks like uh, Eighth Florida's moving across. Looks like those skirmishers decided that they should move across, which I think is a wise decision. Yeah, uh, she got uh, hit by Artie, but not too bad. Think, yeah, they were kind of spread out, so I think only one person actually died from that. Which, in the grand scheme of things, wasn't that bad. Perkin poor Perkington, though, knocked over twice. Can't get up. <laughs> he made Hello? it, though. He made it. That's because he's the Ordnance Sergeant. He's used to the Ordnance. Ah, here we go. So now we're right. at 6.30. Like it's, so now the mm. Union hasn't really made a big move yet here. Yeah, I mean, six minutes, six or five minutes ago, I would say it was anyone's game. Now the Union's definitely on the back foot. They haven't got them much time. Uh... Well, yeah, there's that, and then I, I think they're a little bit uh, yeah, too spread out. It, it's hard to coordinate any kind of major move now. Yeah, they're too spread out. I mean, look, you've got, I think, yeah, you've got two units of Union regiments over there on the right-hand side trying to make a push. You've got uh, a smaller unit of Union on the left, and it's just sort of, uh, I mean, I've seen three Union on the left going on their own. It's like... They're facing two full Confederate regiments. I'm not sure what they were trying to accomplish there. Oh, if they were trying to capture the flag, that would have been understandable, but they just walked straight past it. Uh, I, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I think the Union right here is the side I would bet on having the best option right now to, to have an effect. Yeah. Um, oh, looks like there's some big moves going on the right hand Union side. Uh, yeah, Fort George are coming up, and then 3rd Alabama is counter charging them, though. Oh, oh they yeah. need this other unit to charge in. Yep. Oh, it looks like they're going in, they're going in, but was it too late? I think I, I, it might be too late for 4th Georgia. It's, it's, it's too late for 4th, but it still might. But I think A and B will be able to use that, because they weren't even, the Confederates weren't even facing them. And they'll be able to charge right in that flank and wipe that Confederate unit out. Which yep, is and now that big. side is open. They can take the, uh, the far fence opposite uh, point right now and entrench there yeah. if they want. So this is going to be the make or break for the Union, I believe, here. Um, they, they've taken out a Confederate flag here. And they yeah, they can't lose momentum. Yeah, they got they got to push forward now. Yeah, you've got to push forward. You got to really. They've got that gap. They've got to really push it hard. Um, which I, is, I don't see any officers, which makes me nervous. I'm not seeing a single officer. Rally here, rally here. No. Um, I mean, do we have any? Do we have any actual like officer people ranked here? So uh, I'm, I see. I see Cloud yeah, in there, and I see Damon from A and B. Yeah, I see Cloud, Damon. So we've got actual officers. Oh, here's in. Owens. Owens is here now. Okay. Yeah, Owens is here. So we got Owens. Oh, and, he, yeah. and he's Owens telling him. Yep. Basically saying point. Yep. So that's that's what I was looking for. That guidance from those officers to yep. get a move. In. Owens is wisely saying point. So. I mean, if you have a look, there's there's no Confederate opposition here. There's really no opposition. No, they're, they're, so they're really going to hammer this home. Yep, they have a good opportunity here in Trench, um, and Trench possibly really... uh, just start taking point, I would say. Yep, so this is going to be the make or break. Uh, Union has a huge number of troops across now. You've got Killer here backing Owens up now. So you've got two officers here 
well, commanding officers, that is. And in fact, I think it's the third one there. Yep, Russo's bringing his yeah, men up here. I see, yep, Ninja from PA's got the flag. Yeah, and now the Union have that defense position. Although, looks like Russo's moving in for a charge. I mean, I, I mean I'm kind of okay with that. You need to get him down to breaking. So. Yeah, I just I mean, want to send a flag. That's the one thing I don't like. A yeah, I don't know why people send the flags into these types of charges, but... I mean, it seems to have paid off here. No, he's, uh, he's, Confederate unit's gone. Yeah, they're gone. You did no. those tickets and you've drawn the other one into uh, range. Owens, Owens is leading up some more regiment, or more of the regiment up there. And you, but you still have that huge foothold by the fence line. Yep, and here's a charge by two core. This yep, could be key. Yeah, here it is. And there's the breaking. There it is. So they've actually turned this around, which is excellent for the Union. They've managed to push it down. Oh, now, now, yeah. Like, what are you talking SB's about? It's swing in. and swing back and forth. SB's moving in. SB's moving in. And they're going in for that mosh pit in the center, which is still good. Well and good. But if you have a look, oh, back, yeah, look have at that huge... Look at this ANV firing line, though, they got to go yeah, into. Yeah, that's what I mean. you still got that huge ANV. Well, it's mostly ANV, but I'm seeing some other... Other units are in there as well. There. Yeah, it's it's a monster. Yeah, I just start killer at front. So. That huge Union firing line is definitely going to be something to uh, push back. Uh, here we go. Here comes Third Alabama. They're moving into the mosh pit. Will the Union hold? Uh, they take it back point. That's this could be it. But if you look to the rear of the Union line, you will see a small regiment of artillery. Uh, the officers, are they going to do some dueling or something? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, they might be. Uh, you know, what I would do is I might try to steal the CSA guns and turn them yeah. on. Uh, but it, what it looks like is the Confederacy have pushed the Union off this hill. So, wow! Yes, that charge by SB and 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 friends. I think 56 and AGL were in there too. Yeah. But again, when I say units, it's the whole bunch of units are involved. I'm, I'm Just the Union now, in general. They've yeah. pushed the Union in general, and it's been the Confederates in general. Yeah. In. The moment you get these mass charges, I mean, these are last ditch charges, let's be honest here. Um, you, you're going to hear like one officer with the loudest voice shout charge, and at this stage in the game, everyone's going to move in with that order, depending on if they're there. And, and the CSA has taken like, it yeah. back here. Um, yep, wow. they've taken it back, and the Union, I don't think they're going to be able to do this. They've only got 50 seconds left. Uh, I mean, they have one unit off a point, but that's not going to yeah. knock off this CSA. And the CSA is no. not on last stand. They could still recover everybody. Yeah, no, they're, they're not off point. And, uh, sorry, the, uh, it's it's not, I don't think the Union can win this one. But it was close. I mean, you saw how close it got for the Confederacy when they got them down to breaking. Uh, the Union did. And they really wiped the Confederates out. But the Confederates just had that. So, I suppose home field advantage. Yeah, and it was it was good reaction by them to uh, you know they had lingered too far out and not gone in by you know 10, 15 yeah. more seconds. Oh yeah. oh yeah, excellent, excellent counter by the Confederacy. They really pulled that back, um, and I think that's that's won them the game. Pretty much, it looks like the Union's going for a last ditch charge, but I think it's just way too late. No, they won't be able to get on point soon enough. Yeah. Yeah, way too In fact, late. There it, it is. is. That's the end. Bye -bye. All right. So, uh, final thoughts on this uh, first match? Definitely a very entertaining match. Um, it wasn't one-sided, so it was definitely going to be interesting. And as you saw, you saw it. It went back and forth. I mean, right at the end, it looked like the Union were going to do it. Then the Confederacy brought it all the way back, 180. That, and it, it was just that whole back and forth. And I. I mean, the communication on the Union side, it seems to be relatively okay. Um, I mean, everyone was moving all in their regiments and stuff, but I wasn't seeing any proper coordination in terms of, like, distracting a Confederate unit to allow another unit, Union unit somewhere else to push through, utilizing that weakness. Um, again, they, the only way you can coordinate stuff is with runners or grouping up at the start before you move out with a plan. Um, and I believe their Union's original plan was push on that right-hand side with everyone and try and dislodge the Confederacy that way. And I suppose once that went out the window, uh, there wasn't really an established plan anymore. No, I, I think you're right. And it's, and it, um, I think they got as close as they did because of the individual skill units, which was very so, impressive. So Yeah, certainly. So when we saw some interesting and epic plays by the uh, Union there, and by the Confederacy encountering a lot of these uh, moves. So I think it was a you know, it was a Confederacy win, but definitely a very hard-fought victory. Absolutely. So we got one more left. Uh, thanks, Mr. Fruit. 
and uh, we'll see you all yeah. for the next one.